I've never understood why people sell their soul to aid and abet a criminal. Hollywood star Johnny Depp has lost his libel battle with the British tabloid that labelled him a wife-beater after a High Court judge ruled that the allegations were, quote, substantially true. 34-year-old Heard claimed Depp had a jealous alter ego she branded the monster after binging on drugs and alcohol. She claimed he had often threatened to kill her, detailing 14 occasions of extreme violence when she said the actor choked, punched, slapped, headbutted, throttled and kicked her. He explicitly threatened to kill me many times, she told the court. He talked about our relationship being dead or alive and telling me death was the only way out of the relationship. After starring in The Rum Diary, they became a couple. She admitted being captivated by him and they shared a love of music, poetry and art. In 2016, Seth was approached by the intelligence agency Black Cube and asked to conduct covert operations for Harvey Weinstein. He claims he was initially told Weinstein was investigating corporate rivals, not trying to defend himself against numerous accusations of sexual assault. Seth was given a hit list of 91 targets the Hollywood producer saw as threats including the likes of actress Rose McGowan. When someone's name ended up on here, what did that mean? If someone's name was listed in red, they're like a top priority target. But basically the idea was go through the list and, and try and find out who is saying negative things because he wants a heads up as, as to what he thinks is going on. He wants it confirmed. Black Cube certainly knows how to hunt a target. The firm is run by several former heads of Mossad, Israel's elite spy agency. Seth himself was also previously a member of the Israeli Defence Forces. Elon started dating a very famous celebrity actress who was at the time at war with her ex-husband Johnny Depp. Like, I don't know what it is about Amber, but men who fall in love with Amber, they fall hard for Amber. So everyone was very curious in the showbiz world to see who Amber would end up with next. And when we saw she was with a billionaire who had this kind of baby face, there was a lot of interest in finding out more. Just what happened on private jets and islands between Amber Heard and Johnny Depp was broadcast to the world. Very soon we will be presenting even more voluminous evidence in the U.S. We are committed to obtaining justice for Amber Heard in the U.S. court and defending Mrs. Heard's right to free speech. Dev is also suing his ex-wife for $50 million in America over a Washington Post story about domestic violence, and the trial is set to be held next year. Heard filed for divorce from Depp in May 2016 after 15 months of marriage, and they later finalized their divorce in January 2017. Seth Friedman has made a living operating in the shadows. There is an adrenaline rush. There is a kind of sense of mission that I've got. He's a gun for hire, a spy digging for dirt on behalf of powerful, cashed up clients, oligarchs, business barons, but most notably, the notorious Harvey Weinstein. Black Cube agents are suspected of intimidating dozens of Harvey Weinstein's accusers. The operatives, in some cases, befriending the women, even pretending to be from victims' support groups, with the intel then being sent straight back to Weinstein. Seth's tactic was simple. The seasoned spy would assume the role of a newspaper reporter, a job he genuinely once had, and then trick his targets into opening up. Hello. Hello. Hi. Oh, hi, thanks for calling back. Um, That's the saying, exact um, approach he took when he called Rose now. McGowan. Um, and I was just hoping I could maybe talk to you about a piece that we're doing. So do, but, do you have specific questions? Or? I said to her, like I said to pretty much everyone, I'm interested in doing a piece on life in Hollywood now, in 2017, whenever, compared to life in Hollywood when people started out, say, 20, 30 years ago. That's straight out deception. In what sense? Like, I mean, what, but what deception is in, am I, do I have an ulterior motive? Well, you weren't working on a piece. Well, if I then, let's say I did publish a piece a month later on Life in Hollywood, but I was still passing that information back, 
is that still straight out deception? I mean, you're claiming that you're writing a piece. I mean, it's just fanciful. Yeah, that's a cover. I wasn't writing a piece, but I said that I was because that's a way. That's a way in. And then, if you were looking back at your your younger self, Rose you say, unfortunately yeah. walked right into the trap. Down. Well, that's because I actually have a signed document from the time of the attack. She trusted Seth and opened up to him in this 75-minute phone call, including detailing her abuse by Harvey Weinstein, information that Seth then sent straight back to the boss. Would you describe yourself as a moral person? What does a moral person mean? I mean, against what benchmark is morality set? As long as I can live with what I do, and I'd, I'd, I've never had a sleepless night thinking, oh, that's so evil what I do, or have done. But there were uh, alleged victims of, of sexual assault who, in many cases, where they say that these double agents came to them, of which you were one of them, and it did money for the waters for them, and, and it made them hesitant then to come forward and speak out because they didn't know who they could trust. And, no, and like one, it or not, that silences people. You, sorry, the, what, there's one person who says that. That's Rose McGowan. Black Cube came after you personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then the Senate's Russia investigation tried to gain access to the author of the discredited Trump dossier, former British spy Chris Steele, through a lobbyist representing a Russian oligarch. You can't make this up. Fox News obtaining shocking new text messages between Senator Mark Warner and lobbyist Adam Waldman. In March of last year, Warner texted, quote, we have so much to discuss. You need to be careful, but we can help our country. Waldman texted back to Warner, I'm in. A week later, Warner texted about meeting with Steele, quote, we want to do this right, private in London, don't want to send letter yet, because if we can't get agreement, we would rather not have a paper trail. Now, an aide to Warner admits the text don't look great out of context, but he does say the senator kept the Republican chairman of the Intel Committee, Richard Burr, apprised of his efforts to interview Steele. And the full committee has been aware of the Warner text since last September. Adam Waldman is yet another fascinating character in this story. Waldman has been in the headlines for his recent and frequent meetings with WikiLeaks' Julian Assange. He has a very fascinating resume. Yes, that Waldman's firm, the Endeavor Group, is located in Washington, D.C., quite close to the White House. Depp is drawn to strong personalities who are outspoken and willing to take big risks, so it is fitting that he has found that in his personal lawyer. During the UK trial, Waldman made headlines for tactics he used in publicly defending himself and Depp from misinformation. Waldman's methods were put before the judge in the Virginia Fairfax case by Heard's team, and he revoked Waldman's privilege to work in the courtroom. The judge revoked Waldman's pro hack vice, which permitted him to work in the Fairfax, Virginia jurisdiction on Depp's defamation case. While Waldman's presence on Twitter has changed, it is unknown at this time what role he is playing and what new bombshells are coming with the Virginia defamation trial. We do know that there are more audio recordings. It seems this actress has met her match in Waldman. First of all, Congressman, what do you make of all this? Well, if Senator Warner wants to, you know, work in a bipartisan way, then why did he want to travel to London privately, just meet with the lobbyists, with Steele and himself, no one else in the meeting, and why didn't he want a paper trail? So he can say it's all bipartisan and the Senate Intelligence Committee is working together. But my first reaction is that's probably not how bipartisanship is supposed to work. Right. If you want to only meet with this guy, you and the lobbyist and Christopher Steele. Remember, Christopher Steele, the guy who wrote the dossier, they, he just wants to meet with him privately, yeah. doesn't want a paper trail and is willing to travel to to London to make that all uh, all that and, all and, that and happen. Why on earth would you go through a lobbyist who's working with a Russian oligarch? I mean, you know, I mean, this is an he supposedly was going to get information connecting Donald Trump to the Russians, and he does it by contacting a lobbyist who's working for the Russians. I, it's, yeah, it boggles yeah, the mind. Yeah, the irony is, is, uh, is not lost, right? When the year is actually over. You know, there's a few weeks left. <laughs> I put nothing past 2020. In addition to the pandemic, there were all those days in a London courtroom face-to-face -face with ex-Johnny Depp. 
Hard to believe they've been battling over the split for four years now. And despite this year's continuing complexities, her takeaway is simple. Adapt and survive. The better you are at making the changes internally, the better you have a chance of, of actually not just surviving, but thriving. Now, Abigail, played by Whoopi Goldberg, and is drawn to the darkness embodied by Alexander Skarsgård. Incredibly timely now that Stephen King wrote the book over 40 years ago. The stand follows a group of people fighting against a raging pandemic, filming rap just as the real life COVID-19 pandemic forced national closures. I finished uh, a little bit before, like a couple weeks before, Handbasket. And so it was kind of like, oh, this is, this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> In response to the ruling, a spokesperson for The Sun commended the actress for, quote, her courage in giving evidence to the court. Dear Harvey. Rose McGowan is the most prominent force behind the Me Too movement. Today, Lady Justice is staring down a super predator. At just 22, she shot to fame after landing a leading role in the blockbuster movie Scream. young and ambitious actress was bound to become Hollywood's next big star, but also Weinstein's next victim. At the 1997 Sundance Film Festival, he coerced Rose to a business meeting at his hotel, where he allegedly raped her. Give us a sense of the toll that it takes on you, the suffering after an attack like that. Well, your life is really never the same. You know, you want it to be desperately. When, when you do get attacked, there's a huge part of you that's like, can we just go back to the hour before this happened where I was me? Weinstein is obviously, in your mind, the, the lowest of the low, but all those people that are- I think they're lower. Honestly. I do. I've always thought people that are complicit, whether through silence, or through monetary gain, especially through monetary gain. What is wrong with you? He has set up a whole life and a company as a front for a rape factory, a human trafficking factory. And he had a lot of people there to help him with his big rape fantasy and his rape machine. The breakup between Elon and Amber was very painful for Elon and he very characteristically I suppose is very open with people and journalists about how much he was hurting. He's like that in business and he's like that in love. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? <laughs> <laughs> I lie for a living.
known for her role in the 90s cult classic, Clueless. Rolling with her untimely death now called into question. Her father telling GMA he thinks his famous daughter may have been poisoned. I have a feeling that there was a uh, definite murder situation here. Yeah, it's poison, yes, yes, I know that. Almost two decades after her attack, in the wake of Me Too, Rose finally garnered the strength to share her story. But she quickly learned it wasn't just Weinstein she was taking on. In your mind, you're at war? Yes. I have been, ever since I got raped. But the thing with Harvey Weinstein is that he has an army behind him. He has a real one. But he has an army of spies, lawyers, minions. It's an army of the complicit, of people that they're going to the mat for a serial rapist because he makes movies that win an Oscar. What? Do you see it just basically as evil? Yes, it is evil. It's, it's literally a web of evil. Brittany was named as an official witness in our case that was at the time proceeding against Homeland Security. So um, you can imagine what would happen if um, Brittany was to walk through the doors to testify in our case. There would be a lot of media That's uh, right. just, for, just for that reason alone. And that would um, totally undermine their um, the entire plan of keeping this case under wraps. So to them it was a big um, catastrophe. So after Brittany stood up and um, had called them out on, on the lie, all of a sudden she noticed that she's being followed. And uh, actually her and Simon had uh, told about it to the editor-in-chief of The Hollywood Reporter, which is a major publication, as I'm, I'm sure you know. And um, he published it in an article called The Last Days of Brittany Murphy. And he has audio tapes of Brittany and Simon talking to him about being followed by helicopters and about being wiretapped. And in the article, he quoted them saying that, that helicopters fo were following them and they were being wiretapped. And uh, he pretty much scoffed at that. And after they had um, told that to him and, you know, to other people whom they considered to be friends in the industry, uh, people started to talk about them as though they were paranoid or on drugs because who would believe that someone is being followed by helicopters or being wiretapped? And Brittany didn't want to stay um, at home. She kept wanting to spend the night at the hotel because, you know, her she she could uh, sense that something was amiss, that someone has been in her house when they're not there, and that it was the sneak and peek incursions. So um, what happened next was very much a parallel to our case, where um, with the Black Hawk helicopter, when they raided our home, they were planning to denaturalize and deport me. They had attacked Simon the same way. He was a British citizen. So they arrested him in the middle of the night, dragged him away, had throw him, threw him in the immigration prison. And it was ICE uh, people from San Diego branch, exactly the same agency, the same branch that had been attacking me all along. And um, I guess that was their message to, to Brittany, look who you um, are messing with and uh, look at what we can do. So uh, the, the parallels were just... Um, um, astonishing and uh, because of uh, all these rumors uh, swirling about her that she's being paranoid and on drugs she lost uh, um, you know big parts in Happy Feet and uh, Tinkerbell and other movies because producers uh, were being told that that she's crazy and paranoid and, sure. and uh, yeah. drugs uh, but she was telling the truth there's just no one would believe it wow. and then um, all of a sudden uh, Brittany was um, was found dead in, in her home and shortly before her death she was experiencing very strong abdominal pains and she was vomiting a brown fluid and exactly the same thing happened five months later with her husband. He was experiencing sharp abdominal pains with brown liquid um, coming out of his mouth and um, this would definitely any normal human being would say, well, let's check if there were any poisons or toxins that these people may have been subjected to, especially when these two young people die like this one several months after another. It's very suspicious, and I 
read the reports on the uh, or the toxicology reports, and everything sounds very, very, very uh, more or less uh, suspicious. And I feel she was poisoned. There's no question about that. And I feel she was a murderer. Ordered by Murphy's father, shows samples of the star's hair tested positive for high levels of 10 heavy metals. The lab which conducted the test suggested one possible explanation would be an exposure to these metals or toxins administered by a third party perpetrator with likely criminal intent. <laughs> federal judge is tossing out a racketeering lawsuit against Harvey Weinstein filed by actress Rose McGowan. McGowan claims Weinstein used his legal and security team to ensure her rape claims were not published in her 2018 book. McGowan continues to inspire the army brought to life by the Me Too movement. We are free, we are beautiful, we are strong, and you will never take that from us. The only She's adamant that even if Weinstein wins this battle, they'll be making sure he still loses the war. And he will be tied up in courts for a very, very long time, hopefully as long as he lives. If the justice system won't hold him to account, you will. Oh, I'll be there. He unleashed the hounds of hell on me. I've got some powerful allies too. It has been incredibly painful to relive the breakup of my relationship, to have my motives, my truth questioned. I stand by my testimony, and I now place my faith in British justice. And on Judgment Day, British justice delivered in Amber Heard's favour. This morning, Johnny Depp lost his libel trial against The Sun after they branded him a wife beater. Judge Mr Justice Nicholl found that 12 of the 14 alleged incidents of domestic violence were, in his words, substantially true. So it's this constant state of going, I've got an enemy at home, but the whole system is also an enemy as well. I will call the cops. You told I will call the cops. I did not call the cops, and I did not give them any statement when they came. I've been trying to protect you. I you told I.O. to call the cops. When? When? While it, while it was happening? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because the last time that it got crazy between us, I really did think I was going to lose my life, and I thought you would do it on accident. And I told you that. I said, oh, my God, I thought for the first time. Amber, I, I lost oh, a finger, man. Come on. So when I say that I thought you could kill me, that doesn't mean you count her, which you also, uh, that, that, that you lost your own finger. I, I am not trying to attack you here. I'm just trying to point out the fact of why I said call 911. Because I was, you, are, you had your hands on me after you threw a phone in my face, and I had gotten crazy in the past, and I truly thought I need to stop this madness before I get hurt. Oh my God. They finally called the police. What they did next is shameful. You get a whole lot of people showing up with a whole lot of shoulder bling telling you not to make a statement. Is that what they told you? Um, not directly on the night. So I sent a text message to the sergeant and said that I was really afraid of him, especially when he's drunk because he crosses the line when he's really angry. And... I got a pretty solid ticking off for doing that because he said, um, because he put that in writing and you shouldn't be so stupid and put stuff like that in writing. Sorry, so this is the senior station policeman says to you, don't, you've done the wrong thing, don't put... This stuff in writing. Because it'll trigger an investigation. He had me screaming and like... 
from home. The end all be home. The well, right sort of yeah. offensive thing. You can throw a punch. Or yeah, you can, screaming is okay. You can headbutt somebody screaming, but don't scream. Huh. I headbutted you. Couldn't believe you did that. Forehead. That doesn't break him out his severed finger to paint graffiti in his own blood. This, the judge said, was a sign of the depth of his rage. Now for three weeks, exes Amber Heard and Johnny Depp arrived here at the High Court, always by different entrances at different times, only to face each other in court. As Amber Heard accused her ex-husband of being a prolific domestic abuser, who even held her hostage on one occasion. Now Johnny Depp always denied that. Instead, he called his ex-wife's allegations a hoax because she was, quote, a gold digger. Today, the judge ruled that he did not accept that characterization of Miss Heard. Amber Heard's US legal team said they were not surprised by the verdict and were planning to bring even more evidence against her ex-husband in the American lawsuit next year. Write me a letter, put it in an envelope every morning if you want, or on, on our little notebook. What? Wrong? No, no, please don't, please love me today, please don't hurt me today, please don't get crazy today. But then what happens if one of us gets hurt or mad because that's life, it will come up. If we don't do things differently, I want a list of things that we don't do. I can't keep throwing our relationship in the air every time we get mad because all bets are off every time the blood pressure goes up a certain amount. I did not start screaming until you had f***ing said all the shit. You poke an animal enough, it is eventually, it doesn't matter how friendly it is, That's how not cool. True. Well, I it's the same for, for me. So long, it's the same for me, And you kicked and kicked and kicked so bad. I have not done this to you. I have not said these things to you. Yeah. I have not started the fight by saying then I'm going to get in another room. And I'm not going to sit here and fight about f***ing Toronto anymore. Guess what? I let it go. I'm not f***ing about, I'm not f***ing talking about Toronto. Send I can me the tapes. It, I can whisper it. I can write it. Guess what? I'm not saying another f***ing word about Toronto. I am so sick and tired of f***ing fighting about old fights. This is not about a fight. This is broad. This is a broad thing. And if I'm telling you every single time you get dressed and you f***ing split the top of a fight, you never f***ing try and work it out, you never fight for me, you never come to me, you never self-calm, you never self-soothe, you're never the one to throw the olive branch, I'm sick and tired of it, it needs to f***ing change. And you can go, I can't meet those demands, I can't do it, or you can f***ing promise me so I have a modicum of safety, I feel a modicum of respect, a little tiny sh sliver of f like you are in this whether it is good or bad whether it is good or bad down and up lows and highs tough and easy not just when it's easy I feel like you're a vacation husband you were oh, so there when it's good you're so there when it's easy the second it gets hard you question it you uh, last night I'm just as guilty I give you that but I have been primed and conditioned at this point I couldn't I thought I'd never get over Toronto it hurts so bad I got over so bad and I did not do anything like that. I didn't stoop that level at all. You got the tapes. Let me hear them. Absolutely. I wish, ugh, I wish it had caught everything too. Why don't you send me the, send me the <laughs> recordings? I will. Just, I will. just text them to me. Um, I don't know how else to say I will to you. Hasn't really been a kind of safe environment now, has it? And then a punishment um, that comes with that. And then that behaviour, as it's going on, it's causing an, an, it's an ongoing I injury. And so what's happening to her on a biological level is what happens to any animal under threat. And it's a state of hypervigilance which is orchestrated by the nervous system, um, high levels of cortisol. And so in the face of that predator, she, she tries to get into his mind to understand what she has to do to keep um, him happy and to stop him from hurting her further and so she's trying desperately to think of what she needs to do to avoid getting hurt herself or her children getting hurt and so controllers they use really simple conditioning methods so she's rewarded for behavior that he likes you know I'm so glad you're not like those other women and then punished for behaviors that he doesn't like why are you wearing that you look disgusting so after a while her own needs and desires become lost because she's too busy trying to survive by meeting his and where he ends and she starts, it begins to blur. So these are really normal responses to trauma and um, 
I think it's a big failure that we, we can't see that. <laughs> the violent attacks where the judge said Amber Heard was made to fear for her life was a trip to Australia in 2015. So, that sounds very good and I agree. But what about the... What are in we, the moment. What are we going to do different in the moment when you're mad and you go, fuck it. You in the moment. You decide all bets are off. In the moment. Look what I did in Australia. Look what I accomplished. I put the fucker away. I told myself every fucking day, no, he's gone, no, he's gonna fucking put him away. I put him away. And by a list of the things that I feel that fuck you over or make you feel shitty or anything like that, I fucking, when we're in the moment, I remember it. I remember what I put on my list. I remember it. And I try to, 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 to bring it down notches, many notches. I'll tr try, to, if, we're, if we're heightened, to say, please, I don't want you to feel this. I don't want... I don't want to feel this. That's. That's. I know. I need to know what we need to do different. Like for months now, it's been. I can't voice any complaint. I can't say I'm fucked over. I can't say I'm hurt. I can't say you fucked up. I can't be mad at you. I can't be hurt. Nothing. Sort of slipping in of derogatory remarks, and it starts off again, like a little bit, how ugly they are, how stupid they are, and then you, and that increases more and more as her self-esteem deteriorates further. The controller wants the person to be fearful of them, um, so or of a consequence, so not necessarily a physical consequence, but of a consequence. Monster gone. Did you put him away? It's been so, <coughs> when you get on that train, you get angry, you stay on it for so long, and you won't come down, you won't talk to the person that's that not, has you. That's not always, that's not always. It doesn't been. have to always be the monster, but what is it? Can you put that away? Can you remember the bigger picture? You don't want to spend your life. I've asked you this so many times in fights. You want to spend your time like this. No, you don't. But I ask you because this is something you're choosing. I'm saying to you, olive branch. And you don't take my olive branches. You made me feel humiliated for offering them. You asked me to stay in Australia. I stayed. And then you walk out on me all the time. You've got to take some olive branches from me. You've got to offer them too. You've got to be bigger than what you feel at that moment. And so do I. So do I. But if I call you on it, will you hear it? The current system um, perpetrates or, or, or perpetuates uh, coercive control. Can you explain what you mean by that? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it, what's happening in coercive control, I think it can be really helpful to understand first of all, what tools are being used by the controller. So the controller is using very, they're, they're really well described and what they do is they start with a pattern of making you trust them, making you love them, making you think that, you know, they're these really wonderful people and, and that's the goal of, of, of a controller right at the beginning and they convince the woman that they, they're actually better than they deserve. Um, and it's even more effective of a tool if those, um, if the abuser can make everyone around them think that they are also really wonderful people too. And then what they do is they try to make the, the person dependent on them. So it's, that's where they start to break down all the support networks that she might have. So that's banning her friends directly or by saying that her friends are not trustworthy and turning her against the people in her life, isolating her from her family and then sort of introducing the um, financial dependence on him by um, not allowing to, her to work or giving her an allowance. And that sort of um, behaviour is insidious and, and, it, it, and slow to build up. I come to you every single time. On the plane I came to you, on the Venice I came to you, in Toronto I came to you, in, um, in what do you call it, San Francisco I came back to you, I pull you into the bed or I hug you and I get us to calm down and I'm glad I do because that's what makes it not be an all night thing. And nothing harms our marriage more than sleeping in different beds because we're mad at each other or going to bed mad at each other. We made a promise. You didn't keep that promise, but we did make a promise to not do that. It was your choice not to live up to that problem. promise, not mine.
I tried to get you to come to bed when you were um, mad. I tried to get you to calm down so many times in wow. Toronto. Oh, sure. in, in Toronto, in Venice, in, in San Francisco, I would come to the seven different bathrooms, if you were, and try throughout, whether I was mad or hurt or not, because I saw the bigger picture. I didn't think it was worth this. I'm always the one trying to end it. You never let go of things. You constantly, constantly do this. I'm sure you feel that way. You're never the one coming to me and saying, let's not fight anymore. You're never the one saying, come, just get into bed, let's not go to bed mad like that. On the plane, it was me. In Toronto, it was me. It's always me. So this is a very sexy role for you. Are those kinds of scenes, is it as empowering as a woman, or is it just downright uncomfortable to film I, I never feel uncomfortable with my sexuality. I don't think that takes from my power as a woman. I think as long as one is uh, in ownership of her own body, as I have fought for the entire long process of this, um, in this process of this film coming out, I have fought for uh, an actress, a woman, uh, a person's right to ownership over her own body and the image of that body. Uh, and I think you have to sometimes be a warrior in your own defense. In this film, you got to hang out and play with Kara. Yeah, it was great. I mean, actually, um, Kara, Jim Sturges, uh, uh, Billy Bob, uh, you know, every at Theo, everyone was incredible. I worked with the most amazing people on this project. Has been abusing her for years, and tells people there was one severe incident in December 2015 when I truly feared for my life. Inside the magazine, more photos of heard from that 2015 incident, all allegedly caused by attacks from Depp. The photos also appear on the magazine's website, People.com. Heard details another incident, this one from April, when she claims Depp showed up at her 30th birthday party inebriated and high, grabbed her by the hair, and violently shoved me to the floor. The new photos come on the heels of others released last week showing Amber with a nasty bruise that she claims was caused when Depp threw an iPhone at her. Depp denies all allegations of abuse. And this photo is also emerging, taken just one month after their marriage. It's Depp with a badly injured hand. According to published reports, it happened when he angrily punched a wall during a heated fight with his young wife. The filming of the fifth Pirates of the Caribbean movie had to be postponed for a month so he could fly home from Australia for surgery. Meanwhile, Depp is staying far away from Hollywood, touring Europe with his all-star rock band, The Hollywood Vampires. Right now, Johnny Depp is not only having a family law lawyer who has to deal with the restraining order and the financial issues, but he's probably hired a criminal defense attorney who is talking with the city attorney's office to ensure that criminal charges aren't being brought. And these may be the most painful words yet against the handsome Hollywood hunk. Heard is reportedly tired of being married to a 52-year-old, telling a friend, what am I doing with this old man who used to look like Johnny Depp? You don't know moderation very well, huh? You don't get, you're allergic to moderation. So, I balance you out, I think, a little bit. I try to keep you safe. I try to keep on you a little bit to remind you to take the good ones, you know? Do I not? You do. You and do I ever give you a hard time? You look at, no, about the meds, no. You, you, you spoil me, look. You do all those wonderful things. You, 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 you take my boots off. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying you're tooting your own horn. I'm saying there are a lot of beautiful and wonderful things that you do for me that I've never even dreamt, like, that someone would be so caring as to, you know, hey, baby, it's time for your meds, and, you know, it's so beautiful that your wife is, uh, you know, doing that. It's beautiful that, you know, um, the, the, the act of just simply taking my f***ing boots off when I get home from work, that is, is, monumental stuff to me the, uh, the, 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 the the you know the care throughout the day you know here drink this vitamin water um, you know I mean there are beautiful 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 
things that I could go on and on about you, about us, about how you've made me feel, how you how you changed my life, how you you know, but I I do not want to be I don't want to be a head in your eyes. Thank you. That's true, man. It's true. Later, I'm called back to accept this award. Um, I'm assuming on behalf of my dogs, Pistol and Boo. Um, well, unfortunately, they could not make it tonight. Um, I was on the plane, and we were landing, and the pilot came on the speaker and said, um, you know, welcome to Sydney, and yada yada, and uh, by the way, um, we just got news that, um, that the vote came in, and the majority of Australians support the right for all Australians to marry the person they love. And I, I thought the same thing, but yay! Also, it's a commercial airline, and this pilot is announcing this news, and I mean, wow, that's brave. Um, and then, and then something amazing, something unbelievable happened. Um, the whole plane erupted in this uproarious applause, and the. Um, like, it, 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 every single person on the plane um, clapped. And um, I remember 10 years ago when I refused to um, drop my girlfriend's hand at the time, everyone told me that that was a death sentence in Hollywood. And 10 years later, uh, the whole plane is clapping at this offhanded, you know, news announcement that the pilot decided to make. And it brought um, chills to my body and uh, kind of a tear to my eye, and here I am. So I feel really lucky to be here today, um, and I feel really honored and humbled, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. You know, it's interesting and ironic, and if you think about some of the topics and the... make you unhappy and, and, and I, I do let you down. Only you know if you can change it or do better. I know you're not perfect. I've seen you be pretty damn close. I've seen you do better than this. I've seen you control yourself more. I've seen you react less. I've seen you be less... I've seen you have more, way more control over yourself. So fucking edgy and you get so mad so fast and you stay mad. I've seen this happen before, and I've also seen you better. I've seen you clearer, I've seen you better, I've seen you do better and you don't let me down. And I subsequently will do better and let you down less. But I'm not changing how I do things, you're changing how you do things. This is dramatic change. And it's been a few months now, and I'm, I'm begging you, now is the time. If you choose to stop it, fucking great. I will be. <coughs> I'll be with you to change. But I can't set myself up to be the only one to keep promises and then wind up in another situation like Toronto, where you're booking the room or trying to get me on a flight or I'm not saying any of the things and I'm hearing all this shit and I'm not defending myself and I'm coming to you saying I love you and I'm trying to protect you from yourself and I get destroyed. I can't do it again. I won't ever survive through that again. And I don't want to. You made me unhappy. I don't want to. I don't want you to. Can you leave me like that? I don't want to be unhappy. When you asked before, you mentioned, you know, how do we we continue or how are we complicit in that? So she's already in a state of hypervigilance in her own relationship. But then you've got to remember that the backdrop here is that we are in a, very, in a safe, modern country, but every single week in the media she'll be reading a story of a woman exactly like herself who is murdered, you know, set on fire, run off a bridge or stabbed. So that's what she's seeing. And hearing that almost all of those stories 
uh, you know, those those women have also tried to get help and how they've tried to leave and how, you know, and how it's her fault because she's tried to deprive him of, of the children. So you've got this sort of background level of, of anxiety caused just by the media itself. And she, so she fears she's going to be killed. <coughs> because, and, and you and everybody in this room knows this because she really might be killed. That is a real risk. So she has to run through every possibility of escaping this. At the same time that she's dealing with him, she's looking at how can she go out into a world that is actually really very unsafe as well. You know, even if she wants to run away and go into hiding, our system could attack her and accuse her of kidnapping her own child. Then she has to think about child protection. Should she call them and ask for help? But if she calls for help, they might remove her children. Or if she doesn't call for help, they might remove her children. So which one does she do? And then she's got to think about going to the police. If she goes to the police, will they charge him? Because a quarter of the time, that's all, is the time that they will charge her, him. And we all know this. Women get to know that this is going to happen. Then even if the charges are actually laid, a third of the time they'll be dropped. And then even if it goes to court, you're talking about 10% of these men might get found guilty. And even if they are found guilty, less than 2% are going to go to jail for that. And even if they go to jail, less than 2% will do the whole course. So is it worth hmm. all of that and making more of an enemy? Because these are an act of aggression, right? If you report your partner, you are, you are being aggressive back to them. You're going to inflame the anger that they've already got. Microsoft released a chatbot on Twitter. That technology was called Tay.ai. It did not take long for internet trolls to poison Tay's mind. Soon Tay was ranting about Hitler. We've seen this movie before, right? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. It's important to note, is not the movie where the robots go evil all by themselves. These were human beings training them. Uh, and mm. surprise, surprise, computers learn fast. Well, I was at the courthouse while TMZ is posting things. At the courthouse, while I'm at the courthouse, about the cops never coming, right? Then we, we provide proof. Then they say, oh, well, just one, one, one set of police officers. Then they retract their story, but they don't actually retract it like an objective media source would. No, what do they do? They just come out with a new lie. They go, oh, well, it was just one pair of cops, and she said it was two. And I said, no, here's the proof. We just subpoenaed the building for the actual security records to prove that was wrong. Okay, then what did they do? They came out with a new lie, a different lie. Okay, well, it was this, it was this. I mean, every step of the way I've had to take has been because that that news source is in Marty's pocket, in Laura, like, that's from Laura's source. Okay, listen. Every step of the way. All right, listen, here's the... Planted. All right, fine. You, you, you believe what you believe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call these people. I'm going to take care of this, see what the is going on. I will get back to you. Otherwise, listen, as far as I can tell right now, it sounds like you want to go to court and you want to... This up real bad. I don't. I just want to clear my name. I've been telling all the lawyers this in the beginning, and your lawyers knew this. You cannot don't clear up your name now. Don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. I have said only this from the very beginning. I only have my integrity. And they, the unfortunate thing is... Black Cube came after you personally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What toll did that take on you? I think it shaved years off my life. I think them coming after me spun my brain and still does in a way that's fractured a part of me that I don't think will ever fix. But these are people that hurt people and that's their job. Their job is to hurt other people. So, you know, I hope they're proud at night. Rose McGowan was targeted by Black Cube because she was seen as a threat. I feel scared here, I don't feel safe. Like many of Weinstein's rape accusers, Rose was intimidated into signing a non-disclosure agreement, paid $100,000 to stay silent. Women and survivors. And to put this issue in front of you, the voters. In the last election, 
only 61% of Americans showed up to vote. And I think we have all had enough. Voting is the surest way of maintaining our voice in your democracy. be in a society where artificial intelligence is increasingly governing the liberties we might have. And 10. Facebook decided to experiment on 61 million people. So you either saw its election day text, or you saw the same text, but tiny thumbnails of your profile pictures of your friends who had clicked on I had voted. And they match people's names to voter rolls. Now this message was shown once. So by showing a slight variation, just once, Facebook moved 300,000 people to the polls. Hi, Amber. Hi, Amber. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, pardon me. Yep. Yeah, that'd, that'd be lovely. lovely yeah. That'd, that'd be lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Much. And thank you, Amber. Thank you very much. Enjoy thank your Thank you. Have a good night. Cheers. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. He was here, and you're you're giving an award out tonight. Is that yes. right? You're presenting. I am to Richard Jennings. Right. Um, I don't. Uh, he's he's the he's the, the founder of Glad yeah, LA. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> I had to learn a little this bit about him. A test, actually, it's not new. It's a test. Good. Well, you're helping me prepare for my okay, speech. Cool. Um, so, uh, is that your girlfriend over there? live-in stalker. See you. See you there. Uh, well, you guys are really cute and tall. You, you are, you're out. I mean, right? I had to make a decision, you know, uh, like we all had to do. I mean, it's not easy for anyone and that's part of the, it's part of the problem, you know? Yeah. And I had to ask myself, um, am I a part of the problem? You know, I see all of these actors, people I work with, people I know that are, um, living two lives and, and one of which is a secret and, and, and I can't help but think that if I'm hiding something, then I'm ashamed of it. I think if you are hiding anything, no matter how good your reason is, um, then you're ashamed of it. And I was so tired of seeing um, countless adolescents taking their lives because they couldn't understand that it gets better. And part of the reason they didn't understand that is because they've got no role models, they've got no people really confirming that it does get better and that it it's okay to be how you are. You're born that way. We might as well start criminalizing people who are left-handed for all the census makes. It's who I am and, and, and who I love is, um, I'm never going to apologize for that or hide it because it's not wrong and I don't feel ashamed of it. Um, I have a lot to risk and a lot of people um, who have come before me have had a lot to risk and I can't help but think I have to stand up for what's right. I'd rather go down for doing what's right than to rise for doing what's wrong. Amen to that. <laughs> well, you're perfect and thank you so much. <laughs> right? All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. A thousand nights of I've been looking for you. It's Princess Yumira's Bella Talon. You may come here. I need you to come with me to Atlantis. I'm going, Mother. I cannot stand by when innocent lives are lost. Inject your advice to me. Don't take it in.
seen this movie before, right? Open the pod bay doors, Hal. It's important to note, is not the movie where the robots go evil all by themselves. These were human beings training them. Uh, and mm. surprise, surprise, computers learn fast. Microsoft shut Tay off after 16 hours of learning from humans online. Microsoft released a chatbot on Twitter. That technology was called Tay.ai. There were some vulnerabilities and holes in the code. And so within a very few hours, Tay was learning from this ecosystem. And Tay learned how to be a racist, misogynistic asshole. I fucking hate feminists and they should all die and burn in hell. Gamergate is good, and women are inferior. Have we a count of prisoners? I bring a message from your master. Mark Elliot Zuckerberg, Emperor of Facebook. By command of his most merciful excellency, your jobs are to be spared. Employees you were. Employees you remain. You shall be spared the peril of disciplinary action on a single condition that you identify the UX engineer who mentioned Kenosha on the company intranet. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg admits a, quote, operational mistake after the company failed to take down a page promoting vigilante events in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He goes by the username Spartacus. I'm Spartacus! 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 I'm Spartacus!
success, so put on mascara and your party dress. I'm your national anthem, boy, put your hands up. Give me a standing ovation. Boy, you have landed, babe, in the land of sweetness and danger. Queen of Saigon.
heaven won't take me back I'm an angel with a shotgun Fighting for Well baby you are all that I adore If love is what you need A soldier I will be Paranoia is in bloom The PR transmissions will resume I try to push, try to keep us all down Like to keep us trapped in greed oh, 
But in the end, his unsupported statements and his attorney's twisted logic fooled no one. The truth won. The truth spoke for itself. <laughs>